Hello and welcome back to Dreamloop Devlogs. This time it's me, Matthias, and Tommy and Ville. And this week we're going to talk about AI and more precisely like bots, uh, enemy CPU enemies that we sometimes have difficulty beating in games. And more, I'm going to set this up with a recent thing. Uh, and this is coming from an angle of fighting games. Uh, Street Fighter V recently got the arcade edition update and uh, with it came an extra battle mode in which the first task right now is to beat Shin Akuma and I, I lost my <laughs> nerve last night actually trying to beat the guy eventually I did but I had a lot of trouble and uh, it all comes down to the fact that uh, in fighting games the AI is usually done in a certain way where when once you input something you press a, a fast punch button uh, for example the enemy uh, the CPU reads your input and does uh, does something even faster than you so he like literally beats you out of your own move and the uh, enemy does that like so consistently so all the time that it in uh, eventually drives you mad. Uh, I, I remember many times playing, for example, like Mortal Kombat 9 back in the days with my brother, and we, we were literally like like got like super mad at the game because it, it uh, it's fun to play, but since you can actually feel the computer like cheating cheating on you, it's it, it feels <laughs> cheating on you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's. Uh, it's infuriating, but it's also uh, it can't be actually fun if you if you can acknowledge that the computer is it's like ridiculously hard, and and once you finally beat them, it it can be fun. But the question uh, that's most interesting to me is like uh, why why is fighting game AI done in that way? Why is it done? What why is the difficulty uh, handled? by the computer enemies reacting impossibly fast instead of uh, building it more like strategically and like for example uh, why wouldn't the enemy respond uh, with like uh, instead of doing these one frame counters which nobody can do in real life uh, like ditch those completely and maybe just once in a blue moon allow, allow those and just base the difficulty on the on like giving the enemy uh, characters like uh, these clear strat strategies that they are trying to use instead of relying on being just just faster than the, than a human can be I mean, I guess, first of all, before I start my proper answer, let's acknowledge that this episode is sponsored by Matthias' salt. It's <laughs> game to work and I'm like, I'm so salty about this one fight that we just have to make a devil. I didn't actually say that, but um, that's of course a difficult question to answer because there can be so many motivations, but we, of course all, all, it's always possible to speculate. And I would assume one possible way is, uh, reason is because uh, what is the alternative to the AI acting, you know, predictably? Well, it's the AI acting unpredictably, which can also be super frustrating and which introduces an element of RNG. So, for example, when they were making that particular AI, maybe they had a design philosophy that it needs to be predictable, it needs to be something where you can, because, you know, it's, if it's unpredictable, you cannot react to it. And then, at the same time, they were like, we also have to make it really difficult. And then you get to a point where it's because it's really difficult because and that's interesting you know we're talking about AI which in itself is a misleading term because it's artificial intelligence and of course they are not intelligent by default so they cannot really easily play like humans they can play like as if you know they can fool you into thinking that they are a human occasionally but they don't really think so to speak so the easiest way to do it is you know whenever this happens do this and I think, you know, you, you were talking about that satisfaction angle, I think that's one thing, is because it's inherently satisfying when you figure out something completely unfair and you beat it anyway. Mm. But the problem with it I, that I would personally have in regards to it being, a, being used in a fighting game is that it basically becomes a puzzle game. 
Mm. Because it's kind of like, it's just puzzle you have to solve. And, and that's ultimately what tends to happen with AI. You know, I remember back in the day, in, in, you know, whenever, for example, when RTS is were a really big thing, and we would play like StarCraft, and we would play, you know, Red Alert, stuff like that. And you would always, you know, at some point you would figure out ways to, you know, this strategy always works, or you know, if I do this, the AI will always respond in this way. And it kind of like, so instead of like playing the game as it was meant to be played, you're playing the AI, so to speak, you're poking at it and trying to figure out, you know, to beat it. Which <coughs> in itself can be fun, but I, at that point, it's kind of like missing the point, maybe. Yeah, and I have to clarify that this Shinakuma is, it is beatable by, by paying attention to the fact that, that he spams fireballs all the time. He spams them way faster than it's actually possible, but uh, you can still take advantage of that. You can stay at a certain range and jump over the fireballs and kind of sure that it's always a risk, but it's, it, it turns out that it's, uh, that it's something that works. But, uh, so it's not definitely not impossible, but like you said, it turns a bit of a, into a bit of a puzzle game. And there's nothing wrong with that, uh, like actually, but the thing that makes me wonder why is the these impossible counters i wish we could get rid of that but i think i think that's a matter that we can discuss later in some way maybe a little longer <laughs> I, guess, I guess that would something else. mean that the uh, game would sort of create a profile of how you usually play and try to play against that without actually always reading what you input and then immediately reacting to that yeah um, but then again, I have no idea how complicated that would be. Mm. Uh, I, I think some ga yeah, I think work. some games have said they they have done that. I'm not sure if that's what they've actually done. But uh, some racing games, I guess, like some older Forza games, uh, they said that they have this drive driver AI that sort of figures out how you usually play and then tries to counter it. Yeah. Uh, which in a driving game, of course, okay, it's not so. Reaction heavy, so if, if they overtake you and push you out of the road, then I guess that's how they that's gonna go. But um, then you talked about it becoming a puzzle um, that actually brought to mind that I, I really love to play with the AI in Hitman games mm. and in Metal Gear Solid games. Yeah. Because I think there it's like here the kind of like the puzzle thing is incorporated into into the gameplay itself. It's part yeah. of the game. I mean, Hitman is basically yeah. a puzzle game in itself, right? yeah. even though it's masquerading as a third-person uh, shooter, I guess. Um, but yeah, in those games, I guess the most of the gameplay really comes from you playing with the uh, or trying to play the AI in mm. a way, you know, fool them. Especially in Hitman, you're given the really good tools to do that. For example, the, all the uh, different um, suits you can wear and the clothing, so you can do this sort of social stealth. Yeah, yeah. So it's like messing, messing with the, like poking at the AI. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that is the game. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, yeah, and that's you know that there it really works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also you can distract the AI, throwing coins or making noise, mm -hmm. like, and they come to investigate. That's that's that makes sense, and you know. Uh, sometimes, of course, the AI kind of uh, maybe in unintentionally cheats by, by by like alerting all the guards in an area, even though only one of them was supposed to be alerted or something like that. But yeah. then those are corner cases. And then you, I mean, if the game is upfront about it, like mm. okay, if you're being seen, then everyone will be alerted. I don't think yeah. that's a yeah. problem. Yeah, if, it, if it's a clear mechanic. Kind of, yeah. And I don't have a problem with something like that because it could be also like explained in a like in more way yeah. for example having like superhuman creatures who, who have a hive mind or something like that that would be actually cool like i would be fine with that. and i mean it doesn't even necessarily need to be like even if you know in a stealth game if that is the way it works then that is just the way it works to game mm -hmm. mechanic yeah but that, i think you know course, nowhere yeah. can like what is emerging here is that there are you know two different types of ai in, mm -hmm. you know that we're discussing here because that where we started was the you know the street fighter ai mm -hmm. which is supposed to pretend that it's a human pretty mm -hmm. much because that's what a fighting game is pretty mm -hmm. much it's you know it, that's what it's built for yeah. but then in hitman you know it's you know it's not supposed to be a player you know mm -hmm. it may be supposed to be a human so to speak but it's not supposed to you know have the same tools as the player it's of not course. symmetric so i guess the problem is when when like there's an implication that gameplay is symmetric, but then it's not actually symmetric. 
you know. And then there's a lot of games like Take You Know, Civilizations, Civilizations games, where after basically the normal difficulty or whatever it's called, the AI, yeah, it like gets a bit better, like it, it's a bit smarter or whatever, you know, however you wanna, wanna or whatever you wanna call that. But the big thing is that they just get more stuff. Everything is cheaper for them. Everything is faster for them. Stuff they start like that. with more. They start with more. Yeah, exactly. And then like, and that that that's a weird thing because Civ always like against humans and against AI, it's a completely different game. Mm -hmm. And especially because the hardest difficulty, for example, in Civ Five or Civ Six, is like either it's completely broken and unfair, or you know you break the puzzle, so to speak. Yeah. But there's there are still people who enjoy you know hardest difficulty save a lot because there's so many moving elements yeah that even though you know the perfect strategy you know you might have to react to things and stuff like that yeah. so it still stays interesting but that's like again like it's kind of like a it's it's at least supposed to be a clear distinction and these are different things but you know in street fighter when the mindset you are in is i'm gonna be you know i'm gonna fight against an opponent that has the same tools as i do mm -hmm. so to speak and then they don't especially because you know, they are, you know, using a character that you could use to, right? Like, he doesn't have any moves that uh, Akuma normally ha ha doesn't have, right? Uh, well, I mean, he can he can do things faster and he can, like... But he has the same move set. Sa yeah, same move set, but they have more, they have better attributes. Yeah. Like, the, he can more cancel, if you block his sweep, he can still cancel that into a special move. Yeah. That's not possible. That's the sweeps yeah. are always really punishable. But it's kind of like kind of like hidden. It's not like cause often in fighting games they have like a, like just recently you know, I watched some uh, streamers play um, the, the Injustice Two mm -hmm. and the final boss there, for example, is yeah uh, pretty much completely unfair. Just has moves yeah. that make no sense. Yeah. If if human had those, you know, if human was playing a character, you would just lose every single time. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But that's a different situation because that's supposed to be like an opponent that like then then it again becomes like execution, like a you know solving a puzzle and then executing. Yeah. But just like you said in, in civilization, playing against a human and playing against a computer are two different things entirely. And that same applies to fighting games as well. For like, have you played? Have uh, both of you played the, any old Mortal Kombat games? A bit, and I've been, you know, around when people yeah, play them a lot. Yeah, so I don't think I have. Yeah, but in those games, it's like uh, it's still it still is the same in modern fighting games too. But it was especially clear in those old Mortal Kombat <laughs> Mortal Kombat <laughs> games that uh, that you had to use really. Uh, crazy tactics and, th and moves that don't make any sense th in the context and the moment that you're in, in order to beat the opponents, and you, you have to you have to use special moves uh, l like uh, just basically randomly compared to what you would do if you were actually trying yeah. to beat a, a human opponent who knows what they're doing. Or sometimes you know in a in a especially older or worse fighting games you know. Uh, it can be a viable strategy to just like spam single move, like you know, yeah. like yeah. for example, if you have a long, long range, you know, crouch kick move or whatever, something like that, yeah. just spam that, and you can do that forever to stall and get time to think. And occasionally yeah. the AI will take a hit, for example. Like for example, in, in one must fall, you know, you, yeah. you can pretty much you just spam a single move, and I think the way that the game was programmed is that occasionally the AI makes a mistake, occasionally it tries to come for you and it gets hit. Yeah. So basically, exactly. you, in the in the whatever like tournament campaign mode of that game, you could just you know, you could basically play it by just spamming a single move and you would pretty much most of the time win unless like an opponent somehow you know, just happens to have the right robot and happens to get in and deal a fuck ton of damage. But most of the time you could just pick a certain robot and just spam a move. Yeah. Would, you, would you say that uh, playing against the computer, the, uh, the AI is very reactive when playing against and you are I guess then uh, as well being very reactive to what they do and when playing against the human you're trying to be a very proactive like you're trying to figure out what they're going to do next and not just like okay they did that then I'm going to do this. I think it's it's kind of yes and no because AI kind of you know I mean either either it's random or it's reactive you know it can't really think so to speak like the only input it has is either a random number or things you do uh, for, for the most part. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's just different because a human, you know, human can you know, not only make mistakes, mm -hmm. but can make like a chain, chains of mistakes, can make, you know, incorrect assumptions that lead into them making specific types of mistakes consistently that mm -hmm. you can then, for example, adapt to. And something like that in AI, you would have to specifically program, for mm -hmm. example, which, you know, you could do that. That would be a cool experiment is to program an AI, for example, where take a fighting game 
and analyze like how people play, analyze mistakes they make, you know, consult some pros, mm. figure out like for example what are the usual misconceptions a person can have. And if for example a common misconception is that I don't know like they like to I don't know like use aerial moves too much that expose them to certain type of punish for example and then when they start getting punished punished they react in a certain way for example yeah and then you know have a random number on the, in the background a match starts that you know gives the chance that the AI will have this personality trait so to speak yeah and then maybe do other other personality traits you do that affect you know the decision making and then like that could maybe work like a human because that's often the thing that AI just kind of like like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have faults, you know, yeah. that can lead to, lead to other thoughts. Usually, it's just either completely random or it's the same reaction every time. Yep. In fighting games, uh, when you play against a human, you condition the opponent into thinking something other than the, what you're going for. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, maybe you're trying to get a throw in, so you first make the opponent block because blocking mm, is what loses the throws. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing against an AI, you can condition them because yeah. AI reacts on the same frame, like on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. So for if you're going for a throw against Shinakuma, then what happens is that you first make them block a few moves and then you suddenly go for the throw, but they break it instantly. Yeah. And like then you end up in this situation, well, what the hell am I supposed to do if, if, if he didn't go for, if, if, if he didn't fall for that? You have to figure out, you know, the the, the, the broken ways. The yeah, ways yeah. That yeah. The, 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 the way to play them. against the CPU because yeah. the, the that, that's not a way that you how you beat a, a CPU. But the way you beat the CPU in this scenario is that you wait for them to throw a fireball and jump and you, you jump over it and then punish him because the the reality is that that, that he is going to throw the fireballs like o over and over so you have to take advantage of that instead of the fact uh, that you could sneak in a throw or whatever so i guess like one way they could do that is you know like have you know different variables that they track like for example track you know like that you know if that's a use case like and i think that is a common use case bait them into blocking too much so that you can get a throw in mm -hmm. so have a variable for like you know expects to block or something yeah. like that yeah and then that goes up as you do moves, you know, that are blockable. And then on top of that, make a random roll, but weight it based on that variable. Because if, if, it's, if there's no randomness involved, mm -hmm. then what will happen against the AI is you just spam a certain amount and then you'll throw and it works every time. Yep. And, you know, so you have to have some randomness, but you know, if you keep doing it, there's a higher chance that you... It's still not exactly as with a human, you could get pretty close, because with human you can also, humans often you can get cues, you know. Mm. You can figure out that for example, yeah, well they did that, which probably means that they're gonna do that. And you know, it gets quite complicated if you have to, you know, put that all into an AI, yep. especially because some humans don't do that, some do. Yep, how, like the question is like how to program set play. Yeah. Like th this is getting into real fighting game territory right now, but <laughs> but this is a highly interesting uh, subject for me because I, I play fighting fighting games quite regularly. So, and I mean ultimately this all ties into one of my favorite topics, which we probably are not going to discuss in detail here because it would be a massive massive amount of time required. But I always have this like motto that in games the AI's job is it's it's not to kill the player or you know, beat the player, it's to look like it's trying to beat the player. Yep. This of course not, doesn't apply to all games. Um, in some games the AI is definitely trying to kill the player, doing its darndest to kill you, but in those games it has to be asymmetric in a way where you know, the, you, know you can beat the AI still. Like I think something like Dark Souls maybe would be a pretty good example where often like enemies don't actually have that many different things they can do, but they are goddamn gonna use those tools they have to kill you. Yep. And then it's your you know to, job to figure out okay like how do I you know, how do I counter that specific enemy? Because the enemy is not gonna cut you any slack. But if the enemy has like a lot of tools at its disposal, then it's supposed to you know. But basically the enemy is there to challenge you, but the enemy is not there to you know be impossible to beat, so to speak. Yeah. And I, I like to compare it to like, you know, a, you know, a play, you know, uh, where there are actors, you know, the, the AI is another actor, you know, it is the, the protagonist, uh, the antagonist, so to speak, he's the bad guy. And he's supposed to create tension, he's mm -hmm. supposed to look like he's gonna, but you know, we all know that in the end, the good guy is gonna win. Mm -hmm. And of course, you cannot be super, like, too clear about this because it gets boring. And I think that's where, 
games maybe often get this wrong is that you know they don't because, because ultimately that is what you have to do if you want it to be fun you know the AI has to be beatable yeah. it has to be beatable in a reasonable manner yeah. mm -hmm. I wonder if we've had any uh, devlog episodes without the mentioning of Dark Souls <laughs> <laughs> because it, it keeps cropping up because it's such an interesting yeah. you know genre defining kind of like, or, or whatever, like concept of fun. Because there, there are other games that do similar things, but it's it's maybe the one that everybody's familiar with, yeah. that does like certain, like you anyway, know, it's so diamond focused on certain design areas. Yeah, so. and it, it was actually what, what you said, uh, it brought something new into my mind about the AI in Dark Souls. Uh, because it's not so much about the AI reacting to what you do, uh, like compared to yeah. Shinakuma breaking my every goddamn frog. <laughs> Instead, in in Dark Souls, it's it's more like um, you look at what the opponent is doing. They they spam those few moves that they have, and you you act accordingly. And once you do, the uh, AI is no longer able to like hit you out of it, and is no longer able to deny yeah. your re reaction to it. Or they might have like you know specific enemies might have specific things they can react to, mm -hmm. but it's consistent. Yeah, you know? it's, yeah. And I think going further from there, like as I I like talking about Dark Souls, I'm not really you know I haven't played Dark Souls. I just watch other people play it, and you know I talk, I talk about it a lot because that's what I do. But I'm I'm a really big Monster Hunter fan. And Monster Hunter is interesting because it's similar, but it, to a point past that, like it plays like a fighting game where you're fighting against the big dinosaur dragon monster and they have consistent things they can do and the cool thing is that Monster Hunter tends to be all about like figuring out subtle cues and stuff like that and reacting mm -hmm. to them and abusing the enemy living openings like it's the more I think about it like fighting a monster in Monster Hunter is kind of like playing a fighting game against a human except of course you know the the character that you're fighting against doesn't use the same rules as you yeah. but the philosophy is similar you know like it's and for example like you know Dark, uh, Monster Hunter doesn't have health bars so you have to figure out from oh. enemy cues, for example, how, like, you know, certain body parts start breaking and, for example, they start ruling, they start limping, stuff like that, and then you know they're weak, stuff like oh, that. Oh, I, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, for example, that's one thing. And then, for example, they will only use, because uh, they can also become enraged, uh, and then they will, for example, only do certain things when they're enra enraged. Oh, well, you know, when there's a dro drooling, that means that I think they're low stamina. And for example, certain monsters will then try to go eat if they're low stamina. So for example, what you can do is when you see that cue, then you drop a uh, poisoned meat and they will eat that and they will get poisoned. Uh, or you drop a paralyzed meat and they will get paralyzed and then you get some hit hits in. Right. And then there's stuff like you know, if you break a certain body part, for example, they will become unable to perform certain move and, or they will start acting a little bit differently. Stuff yeah. Like that. So yeah. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Nice uh, gameplay, feature. and it's it's cool, cool AI because they are supposed to be like you know beasts. Mm. So they, that type of AI is kind of doable because they are very singular. You know, most of them they you know they're trying to eat you, or you know they're just trying to kill you because you are trying to kill them, or maybe they're trying to run away. But their motivations are quite clear, so it doesn't bother you that they're quite simple. But you know when the AI is trying to pretend to be another human, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really have like you can tell it doesn't have any long term plans. It doesn't you know. Yeah. yeah, but let's get back to this sometime. This is a really yeah. cool subject. Maybe we could do a podcast on that. Yeah. We did a podcast sure. like you know last week. Uh, it's worth coming on that too. I, I think we'll recommend on many places, but it was a little bit echoey. So next week we're going to do another one and we're going to try a revolutionary approach where instead of us all being in the same room, we're going to do it over the internet so everybody has no their own way. way. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's completely it's revolutionary. Like, no, I thought of that. So, <laughs> yeah. oh, so let's see how, how that turns out. So maybe that will be a little bit more pleasant yeah. uh, audio 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 experience thank you for watching see yeah. you next time